Hi y'all, so today we're going to start our second project from our book, Three Coding for Kids, and it's on page 43, and it's level two, Planets Trip. So the idea, a voyage among the planets, a planet at a time will appear on this display, and your starship will have to reach it. The starship moves in the direction and with the speed given by your finger on the screen. The planets are not all the same size. Okay, so the game. The screen will have a small white circle representing the starship on a starry background. Clicking on the start button, the score is set to zero. While time flows from 60 to zero seconds, the purpose of the game is to reach as many planets as possible in 60 seconds. Each planet will assign a score based on its size. So it looks like we'll have to use the score again, which we know how to do, a variable. The time, our countdown time. And I think we need little circles this time. And it's going to be clicking, our fingers touching the screen, right? And then the starship will move. It's pretty cool. So what you will learn, use variables. Create procedures that you can reuse in different parts of the game. Use the time sensor to manage the game time and planet appearance. So maybe as the timer goes on, the like the planets either get bigger or smaller. So that's pretty cool. Like last time, the bug was the same as the time went on, right? But I think this time we're going to change it and make it more complex and fun. So you'll need some images and you'll find them on the archive in the support site. So the images we have this time in the downloads, it's from the same zip file. So this is called Planet Strip. And I'm going to drag them to downloads. So I think we probably need all of these. So select all of them. I'm going to copy all of these to downloads. Place file. Okay. And we'll also share the file with you guys. So we need to start a new project. And this is called Planets Trip. Press on it. Okay, we're in. So design the start button, score text, score, space, time text, time, and canvas where the game takes place. So this is going to be our, in the designer, these are going to be our components again, remember? So let's get started. So the icon. We need to choose our icon that we uploaded. Remember the ones we took out of the file, this icon. So this is what we're going to see on our phone. OK. And the rest of the properties are the same. So the grid is part of the non-visible elements. So we need a horizontal arrangement. It's going to be layout. Try it right here. For, we, for our width, we need fill parent. Okay. So an image button is what you need. So we need a button. That's the user interface button. And we drag it into our horizontal arrangement. And we need to rename it to button start. Okay. 
We need to delete all the text. And we need to set it to the picture. Where's the picture? It's fine. So picture property. Okay, so here's where you do the images. So let's upload a file. It's gonna be the button start on. Okay, here's our picture. And now we also need to add the button start off. We're gonna use that later in our code. Okay. Now we need to add the score and time. So these are labels, which is user interface. Right here. So we need to rename it to label score. going to be bolded. The font size is going to be 18. And the text is score. Okay. Now we need to add other elements. So we just added label score. Now we need the text score. So that's where we're gonna actually write the text, right? Let's try it. Rename text score. It's gonna be bold, size 18. Text zero. The other one. It's going to be rename as space. The height is going to be fill parent, so it's going to take up the entire height. and choose pixel and assign the value five as width. So, five. And then no label, no text. Another label. And rename it to label time. It's going to be bold size 18. Text is going to be time. Last label. Rename it to text time. Hold. 18. Text is going to be 60. Starting off with 60 seconds. Okay. 
Okay. Now it's time to prepare the game field. So we have to go to drawing and animation, canvas. Let's drag it underneath the horizontal arrangement. Now we're going to rename this to Cosmos, which is space. So then from the background image property, so right here, we're going to upload the space picture, stars. Yes. So now we've got a height is fill parent, width is also fill parent. As for the star, okay, now the star shift. We need to use the component ball right here. Let's drag it. Here. And don't click away because we might lose the ball. So now right away we need to change the color. Let's change it to light gray. There's our spaceship. And let's rename this to star shift. And we also need to change the radius to 10, which will make it bigger. OK, now we need planets. So we're going to do three more ball components. Change the color so we can see it. First one is orange. Rename this to planet one. Radius is going to be three, so it's going to be a little smaller. And turn off visible, so uncheck the visible. So it's hidden until the game, it appears in the game, until the code tells it to appear. So planet two. Cyan, rename this to planet two. Radius is five and it's not visible. Last one. It's going to be green. Radius is seven and not visible. Okay, so game time and planet time. The game time is a non-visible element, so you don't see on the screen, but it's counting down, right? So it's sensors, clock, we're gonna use the clock on our phones. Drag it. Rename this to timer game. And we need to uncheck the timer always files and enable it. And let's add another clock. This one is called timer planet. And we're also going to uncheck it. For this time, the interval is 6,000. That's because the game is 1,000 because it's counting down. It's 1,000 milliseconds, which makes exactly one second. So this is going to count out the seconds. This is going to count 60 seconds, and then the time will run out. The planet is 6,000 milliseconds, or six seconds, because they want a planet to appear every six seconds. The planet appear every like one second, that would be way too fast, way too many planets, right? So 
Pretty cool. Sound effects. Sounds help complete the game. So you have two sounds. One will be played when a planet is reached. The other is when the game time is over. So in the media, you will find the sound component. Media, sound. So we're gonna use two of them. So the first one is gonna be planet. So this one's gonna be played when we reach the planet. Now we need to assign it to the correct sound. So our files, planet, <laughs> pianata. That's probably a planet in Italian. I think the writer is Italian of the book. So this one is game of. And this one, yeah. Assign it to game of. Now we finished the component phase, so we finished designing our game, and now we're going to do the blocks, which is the coding game, coding part of the game. Okay, so coding everything starts with a variable. A variable is a container of values that can be modified during the game. The variable values that can be contained could be different words, numbers, but also Boolean variables, which is true or false. So Boolean means true or false. For this game, you need a variable that allows the phone to understand if the game is running or not. That is to say if it is false or tr true or false that the game is running. We need this because some phone functions, such as dragging the finger on the screen, should not be activated before clicking on the start button. So you want to first have to press the start button for you to move the starships. You don't want to move it and collect planets without pressing the start, right? So now we're going to the game begins with the click elements in the image button start. When the game starts, you need to enable the timers, prepare the text, and decide which planet will appear first. Now we need the when the button start. So we gotta go to the component specific code blocks. And then variables. So set Global Game Actor. So what we need to do is go to variables and initialize global game active. So that's going to be our variable name. Two. Oops. False. So in the beginning of the game, it's false. But when it's clicked, you want to set it to active. So let's leave this right here. So you want it to be true. Okay. And now set button start image. So specific. Image. to text set this one button start off png have to spell it right or else computer will be confused we'll set timer game
primary enabled. To true. And then set timer planet to true. So once the start button is pressed, all of these timers are going to start, right? Now label time. Oh no, I spelled that wrong. Okay. Label time. Color. Okay, so. Color black, so gray. Mm. And set. Text time. To walk. And then the text time text. Fonts. No, not the font size, the text into the trash. G60. So that's math. X score to zero. So text score text. Math zero. And then call starship. So our ball starship. Move to and then the X is Cosmos width Cosmos width and Cosmos height. So that means it's always going to, when the start button is clicked, the Starship is all, always going to appear on the very bottom right hand corner, like right here of the screen. So, programming test. So, let's do the test afterwards. So, let's keep on going. So a starship first. The starship has to move when you drag the finger on the screen. Moreover, it has to follow the finger's direction and speed. However, be careful, it shouldn't move if the time is over. So now we need the starship. Right here. Flung. <laughs> Do, and then if then, so that's going to be a normal control, not a specific one. And then a equal to, so that's going to be logic. So if the game is active, so variables, 
get game active. So we have to check if this variable is true. Then set Starship heading. Starship. to get heading. That's my variable. So right here. Another way to do this would be speed and you could get speed. So that's a fast way to do it. Oh, wait. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we need to set. Starship speed. Let's do the fast way. Oops. Get speed. And then times five. So I'll be mad. So this has to go inside. Another math for the number. Five. Inside. Okay. Next, the starship again. The starship has to stop when you do a simple touch and bounce when it touches the borders. Let's do a starship. So when starship touched right here. So I think we're gonna like fling the starship. So like scroll, pretty cool. And we have to control how fast and slow in the direction it goes through. That sounds kind of hard. Makes it be more fun. Starship. Set speed to zero. So when you touch it, it's going to stop. Speed will be zero. And then another one when the edge is reached. So want it to bounce. So call Starship Bounce. And then get edge. Wow. And then when edge reached, um, okay, no, we already did, okay. So the starship touches the planet. The planet is still missing, but in any case, you can still put the instructions for what has to happen when the starship touches it. You have to add score, play a sound, make the phone vibrate, and bring back the ship to the bottom right corner. So when the starship is collided with, We have to set the text score, so the text of the score. And we've got to do some math. We've got to add points. So text score test. Here, got to add something to the text score. We got to add 10 minus the ball radius. So it's going to be a subtraction.
Okay. And then the ball radius of the component. Ball radius. This is right? No, this is wrong. Ball dot radius of component. Oh, wow. So we're going to do something new. Press any component. And scroll down. So any ball, because there's we have three different planets, but all of them, it should be when you collide with them, you should get points, right? So now we need to set ball radius, this one. Here. And then we need to get other. So we need to get the radius of the ball. There we go. Now we need to call planet play. So planet not play. So the sound right here, we're going to get the sound to play. We're also going to get the planet to vibrate for half a second. So that's 500 milliseconds. And then call Starship move to. We want to move it to the bottom of the screen. So I'll be in Starship. And remember the X is going to be the width and the height. So cosmos width and cosmos height. Axis width. There we go. Now, game end. The game time is regulated through the clock timer game, which clicks, ticks off each second. So each second, the game has to check if the time is greater than zero. And in that case, update the time text. So the timer has to count down, right, and check to make sure that there's still more time. If there's no more time, the game has to stop. So now we need to when the game time 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 again time right so then we need a if then else so that's going to be a statement in the control so if the timer is greater than zero that's going to be math greater than. This 
So here's something. The logic, this equal sign, and the math equal sign are different. The math equal sign checks for numbers. So if it's greater than zero, so what we're about to do, greater than zero, right? But the logic equal sign is only for Boolean. Remember Boolean we learned is true or false right here. See, also inside logic. So logic is Boolean, true or false. And if it is true, if it is false. The math is checking if the variables or the timer is greater than zero, less than zero. So numbers. So greater than text time. Then we got a, if it's still greater than zero, then we need to count down. So set text. To text minus one, so text timer minus one. We need to put all of this inside a subtraction. But if it isn't greater than zero, so it's like if this is greater than zero, then we subtract time. Else, like if it's not greater than zero, the game has ended, right? Because there's no more time left. So then we need to set our variable. Remember our active variable? It becomes true when we press the start button and it becomes false when the timer runs out. So now we're gonna set this to false. Also the game will go on forever and you'll get many, many points. So then, that timer game, timer mute. So all the timers gotta stop. Time planet. And then set the starship speed to zero. So it's not moving. Set label time text color to red so all our text turns to red pretty intense so label time color red Okay, and I think something else before on our code, remember this beginning part? I think there actually might be a problem in the book. It should be the label score and the label top to black because these are the things we're changing to red right now. Once we change them to red, we want to change them back to black when we play the game again. So don't scare people. It's like, why is that red? Still have time. So they will score also to black. Oh, I set it to red right now. So did you see how I changed it? Yep. If you don't change it, then it's going to stay always as red. 
Okay, and then we call game over dot play. So that's going to be a sound. Very game over sound. And we're also going to vibrate for half a second. And then we're going to set the button start. So before it was off and now it's on again. So button start image. Going to change the image. Text. Button start on dot png. Okay. At this point, the starship moves, the game starts and ends, the score is assigned, but you still have to place the planets. You have to place one planet at a time randomly. So we need to use a procedure, which is a group of instructions. You'll call all together using only one call. So now we're going to check out our procedures do. So let's use the procedure do. And we're going to call this, give it a better name, which planet? And now we need to click on the blue icon, so the setting, the little gear icon. And then we need to drag the input X from the left part. And then we need to drag it in here. Yep. Wow. <laughs> okay, that's interesting. And then instead of calling this X, we're going to change the name planet number. There we go. So now we've got to set all of the planets to false. Hey, where's our third planet? Let's go back to designer and look for it. Oh, I didn't rename it. Okay. This is planet three. Gotta be careful. I gotta be careful. Okay. Now we should have all three planets. And we gotta set all of them to false. So all of their visible to false. They're all hidden. Okay. And now um, we need a if then. Still if then. Isn't this so cool? This literally allows you to build your own block. So 
Right now they want us to drive an else if, drive an else under. So this is what this entire big yellow block means. So if this condition is met, so if this is good, then this happens. If, it, this, if this condition isn't true, then we first check else if, let's check if this is true. And then if this is true, then this happens and we just stop. But then if this still isn't true, like both of these are false, then else this is like everything that happens afterwards. So this will be like, if nothing, if none of these happen, then fine, this one will run. So that's cool. So let's do this. So what we want to do now is if get planet one equals one, so equals get planet number. There we go, here's our error, equal to one. So if there is planet number is one, I mean this set planet one to be something. Okay. I'm going to set it to true. And then we need to call planet one to move to a random location. So we first make it visible and then it moves to a random location. So random integer so from one to cosmos width. Now we're going to do this cosmos. So if I delete this, cosmos height, there we go. And now we got to copy this. Let's see if we can copy. I just want to try. So I'm going to right click. Ooh, there's a duplicate. I'm just going to duplicate this. This saves time. But what we need to make a little changes. So now if this is equal to 2, let's, let's see if we can duplicate this. So right click, duplicate. I don't know what's going on. Oh, I only duplicated the top part. Let's duplicate this. Now let's put it back. Oh, you only could duplicate one block at a time. I get it. Duplicating because you need three sets of these, except each one is a, for a different planet. So if this is planet number one, then planet one happens. If this planet, if the variable planet number equals two, then planet two is visible, and planet two moves to a random location. Else, so if it's not one or two, what number could it be? Three. It's going to be planet three. It's going to be visible. Planet three moves to a random location. 
Now in procedures, we have the structure called which planet? Which planet is it? So inside the timer planet, timer do. So let's do the timer planet. See the other one. We got two. Go to the procedures. Call this. So when each time the timer for the planet timer happens, which is every six seconds, remember we set it in the properties in designer. So every time this happens, then we got to call this random. We got to choose a random planet. So one, two, three. So random integer from one to three. So if you think about it, every time the timer happens, so every six seconds, there's going to be a random number assigned to planet number, which is a variable. Remember, it could be assigned to any number. So one, or one, two, three. So say if it's one, then planet one happens. It also could be planet two and planet three. So that's going to make it so exciting because you can't guess which comes next. Be any planet. Okay, and now we also have to call this procedure in the first block site we built, the one regarding the start button, or else for the first six seconds no planet will appear because at time equals zero, the time did timer didn't start, right? It only starts from when it hits one, which is going to be six seconds later. So let's call this. So this is our first block. One button start click. And we got to call the procedure which planet. And we're going to call this, we got to do it again. Okay. Random integer from one to three. And now we're done. Are we? Yes, yes. So let's save this, remember. Saving is very important. So now, let's go to the build and let's do the QR code. So I'm going to do it again. So it's compiling. Mm -hmm. So this was pretty fancy. Now there's going to be like planets are going to appear. The, when they have different point values and it's random. Okay, so this is my QR code. So you'll get your own special QR code for your project. So scan your QR code. I'm going to scan mine. And we'll, and then my phone again is saying, are you sure you want to download it? Well, this is our very own program, so we can download it. And then we have to open it. And then it's asking, do you want to install it? Yes, let's install our app. It's saying we don't recognize it. But we are going to install anyways because we made it. We recognize it. Oh my gosh. Okay, and then the so app installed. Let's don't scan, send it for scanning. We didn't program anything bad. Wow. There's our app. Let's see. So we got to press the start button. 
And then where is our spaceship? Oh, oh my gosh, this spaceship is tiny. Am I losing? Yeah, I flinged it wrong. <laughs> Okay, let's try again. Oh my gosh. We got our spaceship bouncing around. Okay, so good luck with your project and I wish you guys the best of luck. Bye bye.